Thank you, Jesse, and thank you everyone for joining. As Jesse said, my name is Sarah. I'm a yoga, meditation, and breathwork instructor here in Los Angeles. And I'm so honored to be guiding you through your practice this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are in the country. And I'm so grateful for this virtual platform that can keep us all connected um, in this time with what's going on in the world right now, it's so important more than ever to take care of our bodies and our minds, our, our mental and our physical health. So to keep exercising, keep our immune system strong, and to really find time in our days and find activities that just help us to relax, to calm our minds, and to ease some of that stress and anxiety that we're all feeling. Um, during this time. And yoga and meditation are the perfect practices that allow us to do that. A lot of people think of yoga as just a physical exercise, but actually the whole purpose of yoga is to calm that chattering in the mind, um, to help us to cultivate a sense of peace and serenity within, so that no matter what is happening around outside us, no matter how chaotic the world may get, we can still come back to our center and find peace and relaxation. So with that being said, again, thank you so much for joining, for just showing up and being here. And we're gonna go ahead and get started in Shavasana. So go ahead and lay on your back, on your mat, and spread your legs and your arms out wide, as wide as the mat. If you don't have a mat, you can just lay on a carpeted surface, whatever you have at home. And blink your eyes closed if they aren't already. Relax the feet, let the legs roll open. Have your palms facing up to the sky. And start to breathe slowly and deeply in and out through the nose. With a slight constriction in the back of the throat. In yoga, we call this the ujjayi breath. So it's as if you're stroking the back of the throat with each inhale and each exhale. So it's gonna make an audible sound to you. But if there was someone practicing beside you, they would probably not be able to hear it. And then just watch the breath, watch the air as it moves in and out of your body. So on the inhale, watch the air enter your nostrils, flow down your throat into your lungs, expanding your chest. And watch that air as it exits your body the same way that it came in. Release the tongue from the roof of the mouth. Unclench the jaw if it is unconsciously. A lot of us tend to do that. And with each exhale, imagine releasing any tension in your physical body, in your limbs, in your face. Just feel your body melt into your mouth, getting heavier and heavier. And with your next exhale, imagine releasing any stressful or worrisome thoughts as well. So maybe you're thinking about a past event, something you're replaying in your mind. Maybe you have a mental to-do list going on, thinking of all the things you need to get done after this or later this week. Just let that go with your out breath. And focus on the inhales and the exhale. And every time your mind wanders, which is completely normal, just acknowledge that the thought is there. 
and come back to the breath. Imagine each thought like a cloud in the sky drifting past. No need to attach to any of them. Just observe them and then come back to the breath. If you're having an especially hard time focusing, you can flip your palms down on the mat just to remind yourself that you're here in whatever room you're in, in your house, in this present moment, just grounding yourself. And now let's start to deepen the breath. Send your inhale first into the belly, allow it to rise up into the chest, and you feel it in the throat before you exhale all the air from your lungs. So do that a few times. And then we're gonna take a collective breath together to start class. So inhale slowly through the nose, filling your lungs all the way to the top and hold it there. Exhale out the mouth. Do that one more time. Inhale through the nose. Slowly fill the lungs. Hold it at the top. And sigh it out. Let it all go. Okay, you can start to slowly wiggle the fingers and the toes, bringing some life into the hands and the feet, circling out the wrists and the ankles, pointing and flexing the feet. And then draw both knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice hug. Rock from side to side if that feels nice. Massaging out the spine. Drop both knees over to the left. Gentle twist to the right. So right arm out, palm down. Gaze can follow as long as it's comfortable for your neck. If not, just gaze up at the ceiling. Or you can keep your eyes closed. Take a few breaths here. Bring the knees back to center. Drop them both over to the right. Gentle twist to the left. Gaze can follow if that's comfortable for your neck. And we're going to try to maintain that slow and steady breathing in and out through the nose throughout our whole practice today. Inhale your knees back to center. Full body stretch. So lengthen the legs forward. Reach the arms back behind you. Interlace the fingers. Press the palms to the back wall. Point or flex the feet. Inhales, you get long throughout the whole body. And exhale, yogi, sit up, reach towards the toes, or you can just roll to one side and push yourself up to seated. And then when you're there, spread your legs out to the sides as wide as they'll go. And walk your right hand out, your right leg, towards the foot as far it will go as it will go and reach up and over with the left arm palm faces down we're stretching our torso from the hip crease out through the fingertips so it might look like this you might be able to reach the outer edge of the foot come down a little lower remember your practice may not look like mine every body is different this is your practice do you ever need to skip anything or modify to make it easier? You're welcome to do that. Inhale the arms up. Other side. So walk your left hand down the left leg and reach up and over through the right arm, stretching out the other side of the torso. Inhale. 
Inhale, arms back to center. Bring the soles of the feet together for butterfly pose. And if you want, you can massage out your feet here. Do whatever feels good. You can fold forward, reach the nose to the toes. Use the elbows to press the knees down, opening up the hips. And then swing your legs behind you, meet in a tabletop position. So wrists directly beneath the shoulders, knees beneath the hips, tops of the feet pressing gently into the mat. Inhale, drop your belly with your chest and your gaze forward and up, cow pose. Exhale, round the spine, tuck the tailbone in, gaze back between the legs, cat pose. Inhale. Push the mat away from you, lift your chest. Exhale, round the spine, drop the crown of the head down, gaze between the legs. So take a few rounds on your own, just linking your breath with your spine's movement. Maybe blink the eyes closed to bring awareness deeper into the body. I like to imagine my breath riding up and down the spine like a wave. Just waking it up gently. Let's do one more of those. And return to neutral tabletop. We want to stretch out our calf muscles. So extend the right leg back behind you, ball mount of the foot on the mat. And then we're just going to shift the heel back towards the earth. So you can shift your hips forward and back, stretching out the back part of your lower leg, your calf muscle. And then switch sides, left leg extends back, ball mount with the foot on the mat, and move the heel down. And rock back and forth a little if you'd like. And then let's take a wrist stretch here. So three options. You can flip your fingers back towards the knees, tuck the toes, shift the hips back till you feel a nice little stretch there. You can also flip the palms up and do the same thing. Or third option is if you make two fists and bump the knuckles together so the tops of your hands are on the mat, keep the thumbs tucked in and try to straighten the arms. So these wrist stretches help with any pose that we're going to be putting pressure on the wrist or the hand, such as downward facing dog, which we'll be doing next. Okay, so circle out the wrist, come back to tabletop, bring the big toes together to touch, separate the knees as wide as they'll go, and sit back in the child's pose. Extend the arms forward, rest the forehead on the mat. You can rock your forehead from side to side. That feels nice. Giving your head a little massage. And really reach the arms forward. Spread the fingers, press the palms into the mat. Hands shoulder width are slightly wider. And come into downward facing dog. So tuck the toes under, lift the hips high, straighten the legs back, and reach your chest towards your thighs. You can pedal out the feet here, left and right, moving the heels down to your mat. And you want your outer upper arms wrapping in towards your body. So if it helps, you can slightly angle the hands to the corners of the mat. Legs are strong and engage inner thighs rolling behind you. You want to get long from your fingertips to your hips. Bend your knees, gaze forward, step to the top of your mat in a forward fold. So keep your feet hip distance, bend in the knees, 
and let your head hang heavy. Grab opposite elbows. You can sway from side to side. Shake your head no, nod your head yes. And then slowly rise up one vertebra at a time. Head and neck rolling up last. Meeting in mountain pose. So you can step the feet together or you can keep them hip width distance. What matters is that you're rooting down evenly through all four corners of each foot. Standing up nice and tall, palms face forward. Shoulders relaxed away from the ears. Inhale, reach the arms up and overhead. Exhale, forward fold. So swan dive forward, hinging up the hips. You can always put a bend in the knees in your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, hands to your shins, extend the crown of the head forward. Exhale, refold. fold. Inhale, rise to stand, arms reach overhead. Exhale, draw the hands through your heart center. Return to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward. Inhale, half lift, hands to shins. Exhale, this time plant the hands, step back to a plank, and hold it here, pushing the mat away from you. Option to drop the knees. Exhale as you lower halfway, chaturanga. Keep the elbows in towards the sides of your body, shoulders in line with the elbows. Hover here. And exhale, relax the chest and your belly to the mat. Keep your hands underneath your shoulders. Inhale, baby cobra. Peel your chest from the ground. Very little weight in the hands. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, baby cobra. Shine your heart to the front of the room. Point your toes back. Exhale, lower. Third time, inhale, lift. Get a little higher this third time. Maybe even lift the hands from the mat. Exhale, come back down. Return to your hands and your knees and then down dog, lift the hips high. Reach the chest towards the thighs. Bend your knees, gaze forward, step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift on your inhale. Forward fold on the exhale. Inhale, rise, sweep the arms out to the sides and overhead, maybe fingertips touch. Exhale, draw your hands down. Return to Tadasana. So take a breath here. Exhale, shoulders away from the ears. Second set, inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga, plant the hands. Step back to a plank. With or without dropping the knees, lower halfway. Keep the elbows inside, towards the sides of the body. Inhale, baby cobra or upward facing dog. If you're an upward facing dog, press the tops of the feet down so that the knees and the thighs lift from the ground. Exhale, downward facing dog, however you need to get there. So that might mean coming to the hands and knees first and then straightening the legs back. Bend your knees, gaze forward, step to the top of the mat. Halfway lift on your inhale. Forward fold on the exhale. Inhale, rise, sweep the arms overhead. Exhale, return to Tadasana, mountain pose. So third time is gonna be a little faster, linking breath to movement. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, chaturanga, with or without dropping the knees. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose here. Exhale, out the mouth. Releasing some of that heat we're starting to build in the body. Inhale, your right leg high behind you. Three-legged down dog. 
So square your hips to the mat. For a lot of us, that means drawing the right hip down slightly in line with the left. Flex the foot, point the toes down. Exhale, knee to nose, round the spine. Inhale that right leg high. Exhale, step it through next to the right hand. Drop the back knee. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, crescent moon lunge. So lunging deeply into the front leg. Slight back bend here even. Take a breath here. Exhale, hands to the mat, half splits. Try and straighten out that front leg as much as you can, rolling onto the heel, point the toes towards your face. Shift the hips back, fold forward over the extended leg. You want to feel the stretch in your hamstring, the back of your thigh. You can take a few back and forth movements here, rebending into the front leg, and then straightening it out. And the next time your front knee is bent, you can curl the back toes under, lift that knee from the mat, inhale, crescent lunge. So now your hips are squared to the top of your mat, slight bend in the back knee. Front heel pressing down, back heel lifted, and keep reaching up through the fingertips. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back to a plank, chaturanga. Lower halfway, with or without dropping the knees. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, your left leg high. Three-legged down dog. Square the hips to the mat, flex the foot, point the toes down. Exhale, knee to nose, round the spine. Inhale, that left leg high again. Exhale, step it through, drop the back knee. Inhale, Anjali Asana, crescent and lunge. Lunge deep, slight back bend here, gaze up. Exhale, hands to the mat, half splits. Straighten out that front leg, rolling onto the heel, point the toes towards your face. Stretch out your hamstring. You can take a few back and forth movements here again. Bending into the front knee, straightening the leg out. Okay, re-bend into that front leg. Curl the back toes under. Inhale, crescent lunge. Try and get that front thigh parallel to the mat. Root down through the front heel and lift up through your fingertips, lengthening your torso. One more inhale as you reach up. Exhale, hands to the mat. Step back, take it through your flow. So chaturanga on the exhale. Up dog on your inhale. Back to down dog. Take a deep inhale through the nose. Exhale, out the mouth. Bend your knees, gaze forward. Step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift on your inhale. Forward fold on the exhale. Inhale, rise. Exhale, Tadasana, bring those arms down. Okay, blink your eyes closed. And come back to the breath here. So feel your heart racing. Try and calm your breathing, returning to the breath we started class with. Blink your eyes open. Inhale, chair pose. Sweep the arms forward. Sit the hips back, weight in the heels. Gaze down and try to notice all 10 toes. And if you can't, press the booty back a little more. Shift the shins back, sit a little lower. Pinky fingers spiraling in towards each other. Exhale, forward fold. Straighten out the legs. Inhale, halfway lift. 
Exhale, Chaturanga, or if you want to skip it, you can just step back straight to down dog. So you have the option to flow or not to flow. Inhale your right leg high, three-legged down dog, square the hips to the mat. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, crescent. Sweep the arms up, hips square to the top of the mat now. Take a breath here. And then open it up, warrior two. So spin the back heel down, heel to arch alignment. You might need to adjust the feet. So that means the front heel lines up with the back arch. Arms out, shoulder height. Weight in the front heel and the outer edge of the back foot. Torso upright, so shoulders are stacked over hips. We have a tendency to lean forward too much, so try and correct that. Bring the torso upright, and then gaze out past the right fingertips or to the sidewall, and just breathe. Legs strong and steady, that's why it's called warrior pose. One more breath. Exhale, windmill the hands to the mat. Step back to down dog or vinyasa. Take it through your flow. And down dog. Inhale your left leg high. Three-legged down dog, hips square to the mat. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, crescent lunge. Lunge deep into the front leg, trying to get the thigh parallel to the mat. Exhale, warrior two. Spin the back heel down. Open up your arms. Gaze to the side of the room or out past the left fingertips. Adjust the feet if necessary. Heel to arch alignment. Stamp the outer edge of the back foot down. Weight in the front heel. Torso upright. And just breathe. Nice focus. Exhale, windmill the hands to the mat. Step back, take it through your flow or straight to down dog. Bend your knees, gaze forward, step to the top of your mat. Halfway lift on your inhale, refold on your exhale. Inhale, chair pose, sit back, weight in the heels, a little, little lower this time. Try to notice all 10 toes. And then rise back to stand, come back to mountain, Tadasana, root down through the feet. Come back to the breath. Inhale, chair pose. Again, sit back. See if you can get lower this second time. Press the booty to the back wall. Shift the shins back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Vinyasa or not. Remember, you can always drop to the knees during your chaturanga. If you're feeling really out of breath, you can always take a child's pose. That's our resting posture. It's always available to you. Inhale the right leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, warrior two. Spin the back heel down, open it up. Take a breath here. And then straighten out the front leg, triangle pose. Reach forward through the right hand. Let it come down to the shin or the ankle, maybe even the thigh, but never put pressure on the knee. And tick tock the arms. Gaze up towards your left hand. Try and turn the chest open to the sky. Inhale, warrior two, re-bend into that front leg. Exhale, windmill the hands to the mat. 
Step back to down dog or vinyasa, your choice. And then other side. Inhale your left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, warrior two. Take a breath here. Lunge deeply into the front leg. We were just here. Get back into it. Straighten out the front leg. Triangle pose. Reach forward through the left hand. Tick tock the arms, hinging at the hips, and gaze up at the right fingertips. Left hand down on your ankle, your shin, or if you need to, your thigh. And keep trying to rotate the chest open to the ceiling. Inhale, return to warrior two. We bend the front knee. Exhale, hands to the mat. Take it through your flow or just skip it. Okay, walk your hands back towards your feet, coming to a forward fold of the back of your mat. Bend the knees. And slowly rise up one vertebra at a time. Head and neck rolling up last. Coming to Tadasana, the back of your mouth. And we're going to do one balancing pose today. It's going to be tree pose. So now step the feet together if they aren't already. And firm up that right leg. That's going to be your foundation. Take your left heel, prop it on your standing ankle, bring your hands together at your heart, and find a point of focus for your gaze, either about five feet in front of you on the floor, or you can stare directly ahead at a spot on the wall in front of you. And you wanna keep your eyes focused there, that's gonna help you balance. When you're ready, you can try and lift that left foot from the ground, place it anywhere along the leg except for the knee. So either below the knee on the calf muscle, above the knee on the inner thigh, and try and prevent your right hip from jutting out. You wanna stand up tall, draw that hip in towards the midline. Imagine rooting down through your standing foot into the center of the earth and reaching up through the crown of the head to the sky, to so being pulled in two opposite directions. Keep breathing. And if you're fully balanced here, you can extend your arms slowly like tree branches. If you fall out of it, that's okay. Just try and get back into it, maybe with your foot at a lower position on the leg. And then step that leg down, walk it out, shake it out. Lead into Dasana, firm up the left leg now. Take your right heel, prop it on the ankle. If you want, you can just remain like this. This is also tree pose. Bring your hands together at your heart. Find that same focus point. And when you're ready, lift the right foot from the mat, place it anywhere on the leg. And keep standing tall. Keep rooting down through the left foot and reaching up through the crown of the head. Don't forget to breathe. If you're ready, you can extend the arms up like tree branches for the final expression of the pose. And step that foot down, shake it out. Come to stand in mountain pose at the back of your mat. Inhale, reach the arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. And then walk your hands back out to down dog. Okay, 
Okay, inhale the right leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, warrior two. Flip the palms, reverse your warrior. High five the back wall with your right hand. Lengthening from your hip crease out through the fingertips. Other arm can be wrapped around your waist or just resting gently on the leg. Inhale, return to warrior two. Extended side angle. So forearm to thigh, reach up and over through the left arm now. Palm faces down, and stretching out the opposite side of the torso. Press the outer edge of the back foot down. So imagine a single line of energy running from the edge of that back foot up your leg, through your torso, your arm, and out the fingertips. Try and rotate the chest open to the ceiling as you gaze up. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, windmill on the hands to the mat. Step back to down dog or vinyasa. In down dog, inhale the left leg high. Exhale, step it through. Inhale, warrior two. Flip your palms, reverse your warrior. High five the back wall with the left hand. Keep lunging into the front leg. You want to feel the stretch from your hip crease out through the fingertips. Inhale, warrior two. Extended side angle, forearm to thigh, reach up and over through the right arm. Single line of energy from the outer edge of that back, back foot out through your fingertips. So really press that back foot down. Try and turn the chest open to the ceiling as you gaze up from beneath your bicep. Inhale, warrior two. Windmill the hands to the mat. Take it through your flow or down dog. Deep inhale through the nose here. Exhale out the mouth. Bend your knees, gaze forward, and step all the way through to a seat. Bottom hits the mat. Send the legs straight out in front of you. Sit up nice and tall. Exhale as you walk your hands towards the feet. As far as they'll go, maybe you can grab the outer edges of the feet and keep the length in the spine as you fold forward. So instead of rounding the spine, right now we want to lengthen. Reach the sternum to the toes. Okay, sit back up, bend your knees, plant the feet hip width or slightly wider, and hold on to your shins. Now we're going to round the spine. So now just lean back and round the spine. Let the head and the neck drop forward. So imagine like slumping into a really cozy chair and you're nodding off to sleep and your head is slowly leaning forward. Deep breathing in and out through the nose. And sit back up. Okay, now we're going to either we're going to cross our legs, so either sit in a simple cross-legged position or just crossing the shins, or you can cross the knees. This depends on how flexible your hips are. So if you can do this, you might want to try crossing the knees, drawing the feet back towards your glutes. Sit up tall. Exhale as you walk the hands forward. And then just relax and surrender into this pose. So just let the arms melt down, forearms to the ground. Let your head release, your neck release.
walk your hands back in, uncross the legs, keep the feet planted hip distance and walk the hands back behind you, fingers point away from your body. We're just gonna windshield wiper the knees from side to side. So drop both knees over to the right and then to the left, keeping the feet where they are. We're just releasing that last stretch that we did. So you might feel like one of your hips pop or crack. And we're gonna do the other side now. So cross opposite shin or knee on top. From what we did before. Sit up as you inhale, exhale, walk the hands forward. Again, relaxing into the pose. Let the arms melt down. Let your head and your neck be heavy. Try to surrender into this pose. Walk your hands back up and then behind you. Again, on cross the legs, plant the feet, hip distance, and windshield wiper the knees from side to side. Bring your knees to center. And slowly, as slow as you can, roll onto your back for bridge pose. So walk the feet in, heels in towards the glutes. Keep your knees and your thighs all hip distance throughout this pose. The tendency is to let the knees splay open. You want to keep the legs parallel the whole time. So several options here. You can lift the hips, interlace the hands underneath your bottom, walk the shoulders in towards each other, and lift the hips high as you move down through the heels. You can also just have your arms by your sides, palms pressing into the mat, or you can grab the edges of the mat to broaden the chest. So keep lifting, root down through the heels, roll onto the shoulders, engage the glutes, Gaze down at your belly button to lengthen the neck. Exhale, come back down slowly. Separate the feet mat distance, let the knees knock together. Arms out 45 degree angle, or you can cactus the elbows out to the sides. And rock your head slowly from side to side, massaging the back of your skull. Second bridge. Bring the feet again, hip distance, walk the heels in slightly towards the glutes. Press down through the heels. Keep the knees and the thighs parallel. Don't let them splay out. Grab, interlace the fingers, uh, root down through your palms to the mat or grab the edges of the mat and lift higher. See if you can go higher the second time. Roll onto the shoulders, keep lifting, keep pressing the hips up. Exhale, release, slowly lower your bottom back to the mat. Separate your feet mat distance and you can windshield wiper the knees from side to side a few times.
Okay, bring your knees back to center. Take your right ankle, cross it over the left knee to create a figure four. Keep that right foot flexed the whole time. That's to protect your knee. And then either remain here and just walk the left heel in towards the body as you push the right knee forward or thread the needle. Thread your right arm between your legs and draw that left knee into your chest. So you can grab behind the thigh or the shin and pull it in. Press the tailbone forward and down along the mat. Keep your head and your shoulders on the ground. If they lift, then just don't grab the knee in. Just walk the heel in, push the knee forward. You want to circle out the left ankle here, you can. And then switch sides. Left ankle crosses over the right knee. Walk the right heel in. Push the left knee forward or thread the needle. Thread the left arm between the legs. Reach behind for the back of the thigh or the shin. And draw the right knee into your chest. Keep that left foot flex the whole time. Option to circle out the right foot. Or the right ankle, rather. Lengthen the tailbone forward and down along the mat. Uncross the leg. Give yourself a nice big hug. Squeeze everything in. So hug your knees into your chest. Grab opposite elbows if you can. Reach the forehead to the knees. Curl into a tight ball. Squeeze everything in. Full body stretch, lengthen the legs forward, reach the arms back behind you. Get long throughout the whole body as you inhale. Last stretch of class today. Exhale, release your arms down by your sides, coming back to Shavasana, the same pose you started last day. So let the legs Spread wide as the mat, palms face up in a receiving gesture, allowing your body to receive all the benefits of your physical practice today. Blink the eyes closed. Let's take a collective breath together. Inhale through the nose, slowly filling the lungs all the way to the top and hold it there. Exhale out the mouth. Again, inhale through the nose, fill the lungs, hold it at the top, take one last sip of air in, exhale, release. Now release control of the breath, just let your body do what it does naturally. Release any remaining tension in your physical body. Allowing it to sink into the mat. Nothing left to do except to surrender.
Feel your belly rising and falling gently with each breath. Feel your heart beating in your chest. And notice that same heartbeat in the palms of your hands or your fingertips. Begin to wiggle the fingers and the toes, coming back to the room. Roll onto one side, curled in a fetal position, allowing your head to rest on the bicep for a few breaths. When you're ready, push yourself up slowly to a seat, keeping the eyes closed. Draw your hands together at your heart to seal in your practice. Inhale, lift the chest slightly. Exhale, bow your forehead towards the fingertips. In gratitude to yourself for showing up today, for giving your body some much needed physical exercise and your mind some much needed peace and relaxation. Remember, we cannot always control what happens around us, the external circumstances, other people. We can always control what's happening within us. We can control our emotions and our sense of peace and serenity by just coming back to the breath, our mats, and just sitting with ourselves, being in the present moment. Thank you all so much for joining me for this class. I hope you feel a little more relaxed and carry this energy with you throughout the day. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Sarah, and uh, hello, everybody. So if you wouldn't mind giving us a quick wave, let us know that you're still here with us. Um, uh, a quick thank you. Uh, so Sarah, uh, thank you for helping lead us today. We uh, hopefully will get a chance to have more of you uh, in the future. Uh, if, uh, if you guys want to reach out, uh, Sarah does do private lessons, and normally they're in person. Uh, but, uh, there's an opportunity to do that if you want to reach out to her. Sarah, can they reach you on your Instagram or what's the best place to reach you? Uh, yeah, Instagram is good. Um, you can find me at sarah.allison.welsh and I can, uh, Jesse, you could maybe share that um, and just DM me. Perfect. So I'm here for you if you need me during this stressful time. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you. I think we could all use a little more namaste in our in our lives right now. Um, so if this is something that you would like to see uh, more of, uh, drop a comment. If, uh, if you wanna see more of these, go put uh, a little thank you uh, inside of our Team Elite group and something that we can continue to do more of. If you guys like it, we'll continue to do more. Um, so Sarah, thank you, thank you. Anybody else, if you wanna open up. Thank uh, you. Say hello or say goodbye. You can unmute yourself now. Uh, the recording is on. I recorded all of it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we only recorded this time, So we're all safe. But Thank you, guys. That was amazing. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Sarah. So amazing. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I'm going to go. I'm excited about my uh, shake and greet. Uh, you do. Keep my body and... Well, uh, today's going to be a great day. For those of you that are secret agents out there, just give me a heads up. 
tomorrow night at 6 p.m. We're going live with our CEO with some pretty amazing announcements that I think are going to be incredible for our community and to uh, introduce more people to our amazing community. So uh, send in love from Phoenix, Arizona, Daphne and Squirrel. Bye. Bye. Thanks for making it happen. You're welcome. We'll see you guys. Bye. Bye.